Work is now underway packing up the records and memorabilia of almost 350 former and current schools as the Public School Board archives prepare to move from their current home in the former Vincent Massey School and they're moving to Hill Park this summer. To explain some of what's involved and what the archives currently hold, I'm joined by Special Projects archivist Ben Diamond. Welcome, and Thanks it's good to see here. you again. Yeah. Been a couple of years. This is a massive project. Oh, yeah. But I got to tell you right off the top, I am so happy, uh, even though, uh, you know, Hill Park Rams always beat Westmount, you know, at just about everything. Uh, that school is iconic and needs to be Definitely. on the mountain and stay put. And the school board is finding uses for it from um, a continuing education program that mm -hmm. moved in there last year. And Hill. now the archives moving in. But you're not going to get as much space. You're only going to get three rooms? We're going to have the same amount of square footage. Oh, okay, good. But in terms of display space, we've been really lucky over the years at Vincent Massey to be able to use the hallways to showcase lots of our memorabilia and artifacts like school signs and things. And we won't be able to do quite as much of that in mm -hmm. Hill Park simply because the building is being used for so many different things. Our space is a little more limited there, but uh, we still have some room to work with. Yeah, yeah you, you've, you've got to have a secure area mm -hmm. for a lot of this stuff because uh, although some of it may just be, oh, some trophies from Hill Park winning football or something, uh, some of this also has a great deal of not just sentimental value. There is value to some mm -hmm. of the stuff that you have in the archives, so that they need to be safe. Yeah, definitely. How much do you have? John Aikman, uh, I think everybody knows the Aikmans, mm -hmm. and uh, John and Murray, uh, especially um, longtime workers in heritage. And But I guess the claim to fame for John was that he was a bit of a pack rat when it came to... That's a polite stuff. <laughs> that's a polite that's understatement. A polite, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. John was a genius at really recognizing what could be kept, what should be kept, and being able to negotiate how to bring it over. Like um, Cornerstones, for example. There's mm. so many schools over the past 20, 25 years that have been torn down. And if it wasn't for John Aikman meeting the uh, contractors and builders and saying, if you find a cornerstone, can we have it? then a lot of that would just be lost to time and history. But luckily, we've preserved. I'm told we have one of the largest collections of our kind in North America for a public school board. So there's really just crazy amounts of things that we have. Well, here comes a crazy question out of left field. Right. Do you have the cornerstone for Peace Memorial? Because I know the front door arch remains, and the mm -hmm. rest of it became park. I believe But that's we do. where Doug spent kindergarten grade one and two. Oh, really yes i'm pretty sure we do yeah will this stuff see this always leads to another light bulb going off mm -hmm. but once you get it all moved is this going to be on public display would i be able to walk in and touch that that cornerstone the cornerstones right now there's talk of um making a little sort of memorial garden hmm. over at the school board headquarters where we have the mohawk trail museum yes there's a little fenced area there and the plan is to maybe move some of those there so people will be able to see it. In terms of smaller artifacts, we are, will have museum space at Hill Park and we are planning on doing modular displays so that we can showcase different aspects of our collection. Um, and just for those out there who think, Doug, did you go to Mohawk Trails? No, I'm not that old. <laughs> Thank you. Hal Hilgren was quoted in um, a, a story which led us to make a phone call, which led to you being here, because yes. I, I find this, this stuff intriguing. Um, you have saved things like the stone, and it, many of you are going to remember these from your school days. The stone gargoyles from the old Prince of Wales yes. have been saved. The window from above the main entrance from Queen Mary. Mm -hmm saved yes and this is all due to john by and large yes by, yeah yes crazy hal was talking about just the simple moving of of um, um um what am i looking for yearbooks yes that you had just five rows in a case yay wide but that took how many boxes to pack dozens of boxes Cause yes Books we've, are heavy. It took um, the first room that we've packed up now to completion is the library. And it was a massive undertaking. The amount of books that we have 
um, going back 100, 150 years, old school readers and things. Um, it took a lot of time and uh, we've hired additional packers to come in and um, we're only on our second room now, so. Well, it, and let me ask you this, as, as a young guy, you, you've grown up in, a, in a, an electronic world, a social media world, when you look at this stuff and mm -hmm. you open that, what does it say to you? I mean, what goes through your mind? Well, You're looking at 150 years of, of history. history. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a bit of a dinosaur myself, so I've always been very interested in history, and I'm a Hamilton native. Right. So to me, I think the biggest uh, sense of enjoyment I get is being able to actually hold these things in my hands and see them, because to um, you know to read about it and to hear about it is one thing, but to actually see, well, here are the books, you know, here are the plaques, here are the trophies. It's really unprecedented the amount of uh, material I have to learn from. What is your role, not just master packer? Well, my role right now is, uh, by and large, digitization. Okay. I've been working. So you're on, that hiree. Yes. Yes. You're yes. the digital guy. So I've been working on transferring audio, videotapes, um, slides, photographs, documents, things that um, right now are not very accessible to the public due to the nature of the formats they're on, and so. Uh, by now, we've done over uh, 200 tapes, and we've done thousands of slides and things, and our hope is that eventually um, visitors will be able to come and see these things, and, um, you know, they can get a sense of enjoyment. Take a look at this. This is the opening of Vincent Massey School. Of course, Vincent Massey was a governor general yes. of Canada, and I believe this is 1958? Yep, this is 1958, and this is... Um, one of those tapes that I've talked about that I've recently had digitized and you know just watching this even seeing the houses in the background yeah it's just fantastic and the Union Jack we didn't even yeah. have our own Absolutely. flag that at wasn't that until point. 1965. we don't get the flag until what 64 65 mm -hmm. um, interesting stuff and Vincent Massey isn't that far from Hill Park so that's no. when the Central Mountain I mean these schools were planned uh, with the vision that the mountain was going to expand, it's the 50s, it's going to become really the first suburbia yes. uh, in Hamilton, so that's why to me Hill Park has to stay, because it was the first high school on the mountain. It really was. Yeah. It was a big high school. Mm -hmm. It was built with, you know, very purposefully to uh, take the feeder schools like Vincent Massey and George Armstrong on the mountain brow. I believe Armstrong opened in 1918. That's about right. Yep. Um, so the, these are these are important. Now we're we're inside Hill Park with these pictures. No, this is Vincent Massey. This is Vincent Massey in the hall. So this is all the stuff on this the walls. This is what I was telling you about. Point. Yeah, yeah these are signs that originally came off of the schools. Things that we've been able to save and uh, store. There you go, Park View, mm -hmm. for our Dundas uh, fans. Rickman's Corner, Sherwood Heights, Burke Holder, all of these historic early uh, Canadian Hamilton names, settlers' names, uh, Rickman's Corners, of course, and the Burke Holders, they all trekked uh, north from, uh, I believe, North Carolina into Pennsylvania, and they settled here, some of the very first uh, mountain folk. Mm -hmm. How much how much stuff, do you know how much stuff is in Vincent Massey that you have to move? No. Just no. It's just whenever you think that you've you've got a number, <laughs> you always find more. And then you find more. Yep. Uh, blame John Aikman. Uh, what is the interesting stuff for you as an archivist? Interesting things for me. Um, I've always had a big fascination with um, some of the video that we have, films like the Vincent Massey mm -hmm. footage, um, because that sort of stuff it hasn't been seen in over fifty years at least. And it's the kind of thing, you know, even if you had it, you'd have to get a projector, which we have, but, uh, you know, those films can be fragile. Oh. So digitizing them, being able to freely share them at the click of a button is really incredible. And it'll continue, you know, to be seen and shared and enjoyed by people for decades to come. Every basement used to hold a projector. Yep. I dare say that many basements have been cleaned out and people... Young people, maybe your age, would look at it and go, Hey, Grandpa, what's that? Mm -hmm. It's a projector, and you wind it through here, and you put up a screen. Yikes. Um, you've got so much stuff. What, what's, your, what's your timeline to get it all 
Yeah. You the, know, uh, the box is reopened and stuck on shelves, and then somebody will come along and say, you know, maybe it'd be better off over here. You go through it again. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, current expectation is that by the fall of this year, we'll be over in Hill Park and we'll begin the uh, process of unpacking everything we've packed up. Right now, our current hope is to be open in time for Doors Open 2019, mm. which would be perfect because it would give the chance uh, for the public to come in and see what we have. And uh, so that's what we're aiming for right now, fingers crossed. Now, I, I did read in the story from Richard Leitner of the Hamilton Mountain News that not everything can be saved, that there are duplicates of some things, it's or true. apparently there are trophies. There's just not enough information on the trophies to even know what the heck yeah, it was for. We can have some things, especially with trophies, where the nameplates have fallen off, no one remembers you know, its origin, how it got to us, where it came from, things like that. Um, you have to sort of step back and go, unfortunately, we don't have infinite space. Mm -hmm. And we have to make decisions about things like that. But um, by and large, anything that gets tossed is something that's been gone over and researched, and uh, it's never a careless decision. And, and the school board is trying its best to, uh, I guess, repurpose these trophies. You've already found a company that will take these trophies. What do they do? Melt them down and then make new trophies for eight-year-old tyke hockey players? I mean, things like that sometimes. Yeah. 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 But it, they're they're being repurposed. Mm -hmm. The one that really caught my eye, the Elmer the safety signs. Oh, yes. How many do you have? I would say over fifty, less than a hundred. And that elephant really got around. That elephant really, well, that elephant, especially the flag, was on every flagpole in the city of Hamilton, as he I was. recall. He was, yep. Uh, so what are you going to do with them? They're not already gone. We're going to keep what we need, which Why is not? more than some people Why would keep. Why not do a raffle and donate it to charitable? I'm sure there'd be, because kids won awards for being safety kids. Mm-hmm. If, the if there was interest in something like that, that's something we could look into, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take credit for the idea if it ends right, up uh, working out. You can okay. get them all and you can distribute them. <laughs> so what's what's your future? I mean, you're going to continue working for the school board or is this just a special project and you're under contract? What the heck happens uh, here? I'll probably continue association. Um, yeah. I mean, just the basic uh, kind of work that I'm doing is something that um, can be done for an eternity. It take me the rest of my life to scan these things. So uh, there's always room for future work there. Excellent. Good. Um, I look forward to actually seeing it when it opens up. Definitely. Uh, and Doors Open is coming up this weekend, and of course, Cable 14's involved, uh, and there are a whole bunch of other great places, but I'm going to put that on my list for next year to get back into, into Hill Park. We were in there about six years ago looking around because we were trying to do a project on the mountain, mm -hmm. and the bones look real good. Yep. And the school board is starting to put some money back in to bring those yes. bones alive. So you'll be part of the structure. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Good seeing you again. Yeah. Ben, Good thank you so much. Good story happening at our, our school board. City Matters at 4, 6, and 10 p.m. on Cable 14 and anytime on Cable14now.com.